What's up YouTubers? Today I'm at the Bradford Cathedral in Bradford. Now it's a place I really wanted to film in different sections and today I want to film what is called the Bolling Chapel or what was known as the Bolling Chapel which the Bolling family used to congregate in. Now this is basically, basically an offshoot from a a video we did on um, the bowling hall sometime last year I believe and quite a few subscribers were interested in the bowling family and how they were connected to the Bradford Cathedral so I'm hoping to meet Maggie Myers who is one of the assistants at the Cathedral and she's the director of uh, education and visitors so let's have a walk inside. Hi Brias and MTRs and welcome to Bradford Cathedral, welcome everybody and welcome to what was for a long time the Bowling Chapel or as it's also known, the plaque here, the Bowling Hall Chapel which is another Bowling, Bowling, uh, those names seem to be quite interchangeable um, and for a long time this part of the cathedral was the Bowling Family Chapel. So to tell you a little bit about the church, this is the third church, where we are now is the third church on this site. Um, Bradford Cathedral goes back, uh, the first Christians on this site 1,400 years ago. But the church that we're in now, most of it was built in the 13 and 1400s. And one of the first bits of the church, of the third church to be finished, was the, the Bolling family chapel. So this is the area of the church where the Bolling family and their relations um, would have had their own private family chapel for, for a while, before the Reformation. Uh, the church used to finish here, so this was a, a window, originally, area here, and there was an altar uh, in front of the window here, so they would have faced this way for um, small services, um, family services, and then the main altar, the main focus for everybody in the church, would have been this area, uh, out here, out through the screens. The screens that you can see and this lovely underfloor heating and everything, this has all been done in the 1960s when the church was um, extended because it had become a cathedral and a bigger area was needed. But if you kind of try and visualise this being the end of the church, this being sort of the place where the Bolling family pew would have been and where the Bolling family would have come, and they had their own doorway to the church. So instead of coming in as MTLs and Rias have come in and as people normally come in, there is actually a doorway that is on the outside of this wall. So the Bolling family would have come in this way and through a doorway here and into their chapel. They didn't have to mix with, um, with everybody else. And it stayed pretty much that way from the church was finished in 1458. Things remain the same, the Bolling family descendants coming here um, and having that, that patronage of this bit of the church. There was another big family called the Leventhorpe family who had the chapel on the other side of the, of the main altar. Um, and then things changed when it's the Reformation. So we're talking about the 15, sort of 40s, that kind of area, 1530s, 1540s, Henry VIII, um, breaks away from the Pope and Rome and creates the Church of England and then we have this thing called the dissolution of the monasteries and um, where things in churches change and private chapels like this belonging to families and, and all that kind of thing that sort of is done away with um, and so things change. We don't know exactly what happens then, we don't have those records but we do know that um, lots and lots of um, there was still a connection with the Bollings after all that kind of settled down again. It was still the Bolling family chapel. The Bollings married into the Tempest. Um, so Rosamond Bolling, the last of the line of the Bollings, marries Sir Richard Tempest. Um, and Sir Richard Tempest is responsible for the tower of Bradford Cathedral. So that went up in 1508 and that was um, Sir Richard Tempest. So the Bollings then sort of marry into the Tempest. In the 1600s, the floor of this chapel collapses, okay, so it kind of goes through. So they have to rebuild in the 1600s. Is the, uh, is the floor, I mean, uh, was it on a timber floor? So the, the, I, I imagine it was a timber floor. Okay. And um, I was just talking to Riaz earlier about, you know, there are bollings that will have been buried under here. Mm -hmm. um, and I have, um, I was showing Riaz earlier, I have notes from at least three um, bolling wills, not the actual wills, mm -hmm 
we don't hold uh, the records for most of the cathedral and now West Yorkshire archives. So if you have a family member that you think was kind of buried here or baptised here or something, we direct people now to West Yorkshire Archive. That's where a lot of our records are. But in some of the notes that I found, um, there are at least sort of three tempests that I just sort of was reading out to realise who, who decree that they would like to be buried here in this area of the cathedral. So, um, so there will have been in this area, you know, and I think to be buried near the altar, which is the, the sort of the main holy yeah. focus of the church, and in these wills it sort of says they either want to be uh, beneath the high altar, which would have been here, this kind of middle area, or they want to be what was then called the high choir. So this is the choir area here. You can see the choir stalls there. Um, and it was also known as Our Lady's Choir. That's another old-fashioned name for, for the Bolling Chapel for this area. So there will be Bollings that will have been buried here. And do you think there may still be here? Uh, well, I, I think there's a possibility that some may have mm. been. So the floor collapses in the 1600s. At certain times in the cathedral's history, they have cleared out bodies that were already here. Okay. They created um, something called a bone house in the 1600s, which is just outside the entrance where the, the song room is now. You can see the old doorway of the bone house. And what they did was they cleared out the bodies that were in the cathedral there, um, cremated them, put them in the bone house, and then they started again, okay. filled up again. Um, when in the 60s, this was all renovated in the 60s. Obviously, all of this was dug up. Mm. And they did find some bodies here. They didn't find any grand sort of bowling, you know, vaults or graves here. They found some unidentified bodies, which were then cremated and reburied just at the bottom of those steps there. There's a little plaque that tells you um, that some bodies were so on the stone on the floor. Oh, just around just the corner the there, yeah. Just by the piano stand. Oh, right, okay. So very respectfully, you know, bodies that have been here for hundreds of years mm. were then removed really carefully, were cremated, and then have been reinterred, you know, after a, a, some prayers, a little service uh, down here. And this was when the building work was going on in the late 50s and 60s. So it's 43 bodies, so... Yeah, taken from, this, from here, from yes. this area. That's yeah. quite a lot, isn't yeah, it? Really? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And at the back, there are there's 200 and something, wasn't there, in that yeah. area? Yeah, and, and some more on that side as well. But when they were, they, I think they expected to find more bodies mm. when they were doing the renovations. Yes. And so what they've kind of deduced from that is that there are probably more bodies that were still lower uh, oh, right. down, which will still be there. Yeah. So there are probably bollings that are still there. But we'll, and, uh, Probably yeah. some here as but well, I, yeah. But I presume one wouldn't know how far it goes down. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think this kind of thing of layering and starting again. And at one time, they actually concreted over. They raised the floor of the cathedral four feet and concreted over. So if you look at these pillars here, they should have more grooves. This is not the base of the pillar. This is not the bottom mm. of that pillar. <laughs> it, it would have more... Uh, yeah. layers down a bit like okay. those pillars over there right, so okay. they actually raise the floor so again some of the bodies will be underneath that concrete right. so there's no crypt as such but they've, they've done this thing over centuries of sort of clearing okay. um, and nobody is any longer buried inside the cathedral can we can we have a look time. at that memorial across there please course, yeah. um i've noticed there's a bowling memorial at, at the top there's one Bolling memorial in this chapel. A lot of the memorials are not to the Bolling family. They, they've been moved from other areas of the cathedral to here. All right. So Maggie, the, um, the coat of arms that we see on the, on the yeah, ceiling. Yeah. So what they did was, when they did the renovation work in the 60s, as a real kind of nod to the fact that this was the Bolling chapel for a long time, they have put the, the Bolling arms and the Tempest arms on the ceiling. So the one with the insects, the, the ants, or I think another name for them is Pismires, I think, um, and the birds are called martlets. That's the, I believe it's the Bolling um, arms. Okay. And then the other one with the, the martlets, the birds, is the Tempest arms, which I think is really lovely because obviously those families, um, you know, the Bollings married into the Tempest. And the fact that this happened long after the Bolling Chapel had actually ceased its use, I think it's a lovely sort of historical, you know, nod to the history of the cathedral. Um, and uh, along with the cathedral um, badge there, the cathedral coat of arms there right, as well, it? yeah. So all and the sack of wool, then. That's right, with the wool sack, yeah. 
And also this tomb here as well, although there's one Bolling memorial that mentions Bolling specifically, this tomb here is to uh, Margaret Mason. Um, now, she, they lived in, in, but she lived in Bolling Hall and I believe she was um, either a Bolling or a Tempest. She was of that family. Um, when the Tempest and the Bolling and the Tempest ceased to worship here and come here, and obviously they've spread out into lots of other areas, haven't they? Um, at one time they wanted to use this area as a roving area when they were sort of running out of space and the priest um, wrote to the last remaining tempest who was living at Tong Hall at that time and she said she, you know, she was fine with it sort of going out of use as the bowling hall as long as that too remained here because that's another link to the bowlings because it's the bowling hall and that the plaque went up that said that this was the bowling hall chapel so um, it was fine for that to pass into history, but they wanted it kind of acknowledged that they had this area has had that link with the bollings in its history. 1960s, this is what this area looked like. So that's where the window would have been. Oh, right. So. And that stained glass went in in the 1900s. And it's actually in the porch now. I think I showed it to you last time, but it's the saints that are in the outside area of the porch. And this altar here with the cloth on is mm. actually this. So oh. this was under the window there. Wow. Um, and it was used up until hmm. the 1960s when this was became like this. It was used as a chapel for services, um, for you know, for small services in the cathedral. Which is but quite is nice there, that we've got that is, is, it, is there many more of the artifacts left from uh, from the chapel? I mean, obviously we have the no, I don't here, think the window. cloth. We have got the cloth, okay. um, which is which is another interesting story, um, which is another, a story for another day. But the kind of the surrounds and everything, we don't have those anymore. Yeah. And there was a beautiful sort of marble altar at the top. We don't have, I don't know what happened to all of that, yeah. but it went. So um, we've probably got some of the chairs, but these are all the same memorials, you see, because obviously they're all from that time. Mm. Uh, obviously a different screen, because this screen went up in the... Um, but it's quite nice to have that, I think. From, from that time. Yeah, um, there the, the, the will be wills for bollings that have been buried here. If mm. The West Yorkshire Archive will have copies of some of those, but I did, did sort of do a bit of research. So Robert Bolling, for example, by his will, 1487, directed his body to be buried before the altar of the church. So that's sort of in this area. The mm. altar is in the middle there. Tristram Bolling, a cello, made his will 3rd of January, 1502. His body, his body uh, to be buried in the high choir of Bradford Church. So the high choir is, again, is sort of this area here. Okay. And then Sir Richard Tempest of Bolling Hall, uh, by will 1537, directed his body to be buried in Our Lady's Choir in the Church of Bradford, and another name for this area. Um, it was sometimes referred to as Our Lady's Choir. So, yeah. But they haven't come across those bodies when they've done the renovations. They don't come across, you know, Sir Richard Tempest or a vault with the bollings in, to my knowledge. Um, so that might indicate that they were further down or in an area that was inaccessible to get to. Um, and as we say, some bodies have been um, taken up and cremated and reinterred in that area down there. So there may be some bollings there. There may well be bollings that are still under the ground and will remain that way. This one is also Caroline, the daughter of... So this is another mason, 1810 aged 11. Oh, that's better, thank you. So Caroline, the daughter of... I don't know, I can't read that name. It's too bright now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's an unusual name, I think. I just don't recognise that. And Jane Mason died on the sixth day of January, 1810, aged 11 months. Oh, no, 11 months. Oh. And lies buried in this chapel. Maggie, so um, do you suspect that the, that the Tempest and, and the Bonners would have actually touched this altar? So, yeah, I, I would imagine so. So this is later. So okay. what we're talking about is when this, um, this church was made in the... This bit of the church was built in the sort of maybe 1360s, 1380s. Okay. The church was finished 1458. That's when the Bollings were still the Bollings. Mm. Um, and then we've got the 15 sort of 40s, we've got the Reformation, all those kind of changes into the 1600s. I think um, Sir Richard Tempest, Rosamond Bolling, they married, that was in the 1500s that those families married into. One well, of they married here, do you know? I don't yeah. know about yeah. that. I don't know about that. Yeah. yeah. 
And, um, and so this, yeah. so now we're talking sort of 1800s okay, for this. So, so, um, this, so this is later. Okay, so it's yeah. altered 1800s. Okay. This this was this was put here. Oh yeah, we did this, put this tomb, here, which yeah. was then made sorry, as an altar, which then turned into an altar. Yeah, using yeah. an altar is in the 1800s, isn't it? So right. it's later, but there, but still, people that lived at Bowling Hall came here and worshipped yeah. here. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, um, and, uh, and it mentions here a uh, sacred uh, to the memory of Margaret, the second wife of Thomas Mason. Um, is she buried um, yeah. in this area? So she will be in this area, and also we've got um, Caroline here, who was 11 months. Who is another relation? So it's a family. Mm. It's the Mason family. The Mason family have a connection to the Bollings, and they lived at, at Bowling Hall. I think that Margaret was was a was a Tempest. I think. Okay. So I think there is there is some connection certainly from that family because Bowling Hall has obviously been passed on to them, hasn't it? So this is still then an area that the Bolling Tempest Mason that that family are still using yeah. as as an area for their family as a focus, as a religious focus, yeah. Do you ever get uh, any sense of Bollings coming to the, to it the has, cathedral? It has happened, it has happened. I've been here three and a half years and I think the last time it happened was, was a while before mm. that. Um, you do get Bollings who come from America and I think they go to Bolling Hall because obviously there's that big connection with Bolling mm. Hall but there is also the connection that you know, some of the Bollings will have been certainly buried here, mm. will have been married here, will have been baptised here. So they're, they're back in its history, um, particularly from that sort of 1300 to 1500, 1600 period, there will have been uh, Bollings here that will mm. be in our records somewhere in West Yorkshire Archive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and so yeah, it'd be lovely to, to see more of the Bollings actually. And also, not forgetting that other story that I told you, which is that about the, the in the Civil War, uh, the, the commander that stayed at Bolling Hall, do you remember, and the white lady yeah. visited him, <clears throat> that that was when the wool sacks were hung around the, the cathedral, and um, so there's a, the white lady and everything that was happening was happening around this area, yeah. um, and so there's a lovely connection there with Bolling Hall as well. That's so, right, and that's, um, that, that's depicted on the, uh, on the shields. On the, on the wool sack, and that's why we have the, the wool sack, yeah, because the cathedral was saved during the, the Civil War by uh, wrapping wool sacks around the tower of the cathedral. The tower that was actually paid for by Sir Richard Tempest. Um, so you've got all these lovely connections with the volumes, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, Just, if you can forget about the projector screens for okay. the organ recital, but this would have been the way in. So this was not this was not here, all of this was not here, it was not a porch, this was outside, and you can see it's very weather-beaten, and I believe that is the, the Tempest um, arms, I think, rather than the Bolling arms, but you know, the Tempest arms that have, the Bollings have married into the Tempest and, and obviously really sort of worn away there um, because it's been, it, it's been outside um, until they built this sort of porch area. But they had their own doorway, they would have come in um, off the street and straight into the chapel so they didn't have to go into the, the main bit of the church um, and sit with everybody else. And that's the window I was telling you about that used to be at the the end where when the Bolling Chapel faced that way and there was a window at the end of it. Yeah, the one that you explained that's also in the photograph. In that's the right, yeah. And it didn't go until the 1900s, so, you know, we're talking much later, but that was the window in the Bolling Chapel. Um, Do you know how, does anybody know how old that is? Or is it a date? So this, this window here, yeah. this window here is, is about, I think it's 1911, something like that. It's okay. not, um, not old, old, old. Um, most of our glass is from the 1860s through to okay. sort of the 1900s. And, um, it's an interesting story behind the matte glass and the other glass that's actually in the chapel is that it's the same lady that's paid for both of them. So one of them was paid to her aunt and uncle. Um, she was called Mitchell. Um, and so this, this window, so this lady, Elizabeth Mitchell, quite unusually, she was a lady of independent means. So she, it was not her husband who paid for it or her husband's money. She was a, a lady that paid for it in her own right. And this is, I think, to her aunt and uncle. Um, and it's the patron saints, so it's Patrick, um, George, Andrew, and David, so of the, of, the, of the four nations. And then the other window, which has got three male, three female saints in it, was a window that um, was given in honour of her. So it's quite it's a little family yeah, connection with these two yeah. winners, both in the in the Bolling Chapel. Um, she doesn't have a connection with the Bollings that, that I know of, but it's just nice little family, little groupings in that chapel is quite nice. So is it is this an original outside wall as well? No, so this is all newer, so that's the outside wall. Okay. Um, 
of the church that were there. So the volunteers would have come in and gone through there, exactly, would have seen yeah. all this. Yeah. You can imagine this isn't here, this is all outside. Yeah. They've walked down the path. Uh, no gate there, so they've kind of they've come in here. This is the outside wall of the church here. So they walk into all of this. Yeah, and the church ends, if you remember, that's, that's the end of the church in the time of the bollocks, it's just here. This is all extension of the 1960s. Which you can see the difference, can't you, between the old stuff and the new. So the bollocks would yeah, have walked in here, gone in their own doorway there. Okay, this is all not here. Nice to see the difference between the old. It is, it is, and it's nice that it's been preserved. Yeah, and you can see just how sort of worn away by the weather that, that yeah. and, the, and the pollution, I suppose, that stone is as well. Yeah. But it would have been a very grand doorway, wouldn't it? Oh, it would have time. been, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, clearly the, the Bowling family was a very important family to Bradford, um, and um, over the centuries they've gone to various parts of the world. Um, I think what you also need to be aware of, the Bolling descendants, is that your ancestors were in this chapel. So it's a very important piece of your history. Come over here when you're, you know, when you're in this part of the world. Obviously, you're going to go to Bowling Hall. But come to Bradford Cathedral, have a look where your ancestors were. Uh, you know, they came through this doorway. Um, and you can see the very walls that they looked at. Um, and I'm sure that will inspire you and, uh, you know, reinforce your identity. So there you go, thanks to Maggie Myers who uh, did an in-depth tour of the Bolling Chapel, the part of the Bradford Cathedral. And once again, we'll have a last look. There you go. Goes way, way back, plenty of history. Again, folks, thanks very much for following us, subscribing, liking and sharing our videos. I hope you got something out of this. Until next time, peace out.